questions, let us know. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a while since we had the chance to speak to you guys. I'm gonna keep this intro music going for a second. Adam Love Jenkins, it. Kurt Larson, Oliver Platt, and special guest today. The inaugural guest is Louis Belong Goyette, newly of the Halifax Wanderers. So appreciate everyone taking the time to tune in. And Louis, appreciate having you on. It's going to be a big open conversation for about 45 minutes or until we run out of things to say. But with Kurt on the panel, that is probably not going to happen. So I'm going to have to cut us off at some point. Let me turn this music off now. Yeah, but turn the music off, please. please. Turn the music off. <laughs> I'm, disappointed you're not, I'm disappointed you're not wearing your red jacket. I almost put it on, but okay. I knew that comment was coming, so I'm going to save it for you. Uh, you know me too well. You know me too well. <laughs> Every time that goes on, I get a new comment about it. Sometimes <laughs> good. The best was um, one of our sportscasters in uh, Texas when we were with Christine Sinclair called me the fourth Jonas brother. And Excellent. I think that Excellent. is the, the best compliment I've ever received. You should before. wear that. You should just wear that for Canada Games. Just for, that's not a just for Canada idea. Games. You should just wear it for Canada Games. We'll allow yeah, it. Okay. Make it like iconic. Okay, keep that in mind. Louis, do you know of this infamous red leather jacket? I have not, no, I haven't heard about that. You, you, you <laughs> haven't had the pleasure or displeasure of seeing that yet. Okay, I'll, I'll be keep looking out for next time. <laughs> I think uh, the, only, the only thing So, if anyone has any questions throughout the, uh, the 45 minutes to an hour that we're on, you can tweet them, you can put them in the Twitch sidebar there, and we'll try and get to as many as possible. But, uh, Kurt, we'll begin with you and the biggest sort of news around the world is the COVID-19 outbreak and more really? specifically how that's affecting one soccer. Uh, give us an update as much as you can, because obviously it's a very fluid situation on what's going on with the network and anything you might've heard from the world of Canada soccer in general. Uh, well, obviously it's in, uh, 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 impacting one soccer because we're all uh, on our screens right now. And I'm in the corner of a, of a building with brick behind me. Uh, reached out to the CPL today, a few sources at the CPL, just to catch up with what they're doing, because as we know, we've, we've kind of heard that um, preseason had been postponed, which is why uh, LBG is able to join us on today's call. Um, but, uh, you know, the owners at the CPL are still intent on playing a full season. Uh, you, you can guess why, the revenue streams, all kinds of stuff. So as of this morning, and granted, that was before Major League Soccer you know, put out a bombshell that they're, you know, eight weeks uh, of nothing. Minimum, yeah. Yeah. Um, so as of this morning, the CPL was was still hoping to kick up preseason by the first week in April to potentially resume play uh, at the at the beginning of May. They, they think that uh, because they were going to start two weeks earlier this year, uh, it would be no problem pushing the season back uh, a, a few weeks and basically ending at the same time they did uh, they did last year. Uh, all kinds of questions that that haven't really been answered in terms of you know who has jurisdiction over that because as we know Canada Soccer also you know put an end to uh, any member of, you know associations and, and any affiliates not playing. So does Canada Soccer actually decide when the CPL comes back? Some people can't answer that right now, but. A little bit encouraged this morning that, that the owners still wanted to play a full season, uh, but with MLS putting out that news, um, we'll see what happens. Now, Ollie, in terms of what you may have heard, the big thing this year with the schedule, there were a few big announcements with the different playoff format and everything, but one of the big things is they were trying to reduce the amount of during or weekday games. Do you think if the schedule, the window gets condensed so much, they may have to revisit the actual dates and have some more Tuesday, Thursdays? Yeah, well, that actually might help them out, right? Like they did organize the schedule in a way where there's very few midweek games this season. Obviously, they did that for a reason because we don't really want so many midweek games. They don't tend to draw um, crowds that are as big. They're tough on the players, you know, with all the travel involved and stuff like that. But in the worst case scenario, you know, if we are waiting a while here and, and we need to do a compressed season, there are those midweek dates that, that could, we could potentially shift to. Um, it's going to be tough. You've got to factor in the Canadian Championship, the CONCACAF League, and, and all of these different things. But yeah, there's a, there's a possibility there that you you have a full schedule, but just a bit of a tighter one, right? Yeah, and what makes it what makes the schedule it a little bit easier for the schedule makers is the eighth team. So now there's not a team yeah. that needs to be off every week. So the, the the my sources at the league did mention that that you know as long as they get going by the beginning of April in terms of preseason, and and they want the teams to have a three week preseason minimum. Uh, they think they can do a 28-game season. We'll see, though. 
So obviously things are changing by the minute, by the hour, by the day. So stay tuned to us, One Soccer, CanPL, and Canada Soccer. Any information, they'll be the first to let you know. Let's bring in Louie now. So obviously Louis, a big yeah. off season right. for you. You change clubs, you move across the country, and then all of a sudden the season gets put on hold. So we have a bunch of questions, but let's start with the topic of COVID-19 just to get that done and dusted what has been the biggest impacts for you and your teammates because i'm sure there's been a lot of things that have really just uprooted your career in ways you've never seen before yeah well this is it's a bit strange you know speaking with players uh, around the cpl and also my friends my friends in mls it's it's very strange like the the first feeling is that you 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 don't you don't realize that like uh, the league is postponed for for such a long time and uh, the second thing is to um, everything stops completely. We have access to absolutely nothing. Uh, no gym. You know, if you don't have a gym in your in your in your house, you, you don't have access to a gym. You can't go on a training field. Uh, it, it, that's what's strange. Is that you know, the, the two weeks ago we never thought about this. You know, we never thought it would stop, and then all of a sudden all the leagues are stopping, and then it's MLS, and then it's CPL, and it just comes right in front of you so it's, it's it's been hard you know I think for anybody who has to stop their job completely and they don't go to work and they have nothing to do I think it's a big shock for everybody so obviously that's not the priority right now we there's you know bigger things right now than a, than a football season so I mean all we can do is wait and hopefully it gets better and hopefully you know it doesn't affect the, the season the season that much like like we like we said in MLS um, they found a way, you know, maybe that they can extend it. So hopefully, you know, with the CPL, we can find, you know, little adjustments that that'll make the that'll make a good season. Final at Spruce Meadows in mid December. Just think a picture right there. Just picture right there. I, I don't know if that would be possible, but you know, hopefully, maybe no storm clear the and field a- or. I just want hey, Louis. Who, Louis, who are you? Who are you rooming with these days? Because what are you guys doing to pass the time? Uh, well, I'm, I have an apartment on my own. Oh, but, nice, nice. Luckily, we're a lot of players in the same building. So, uh, obviously, we can't really hang out all day together. But, uh, See. you know, I, I go do groceries sometimes with uh, another another guy. Or we go, you know, one or two guys, we go jogging. And you know, just, to get out the, just to get out the house a little bit because it's, yeah. it's, it's something we're not used to. It's a big time. It's a big time. The big time players get their own. They get their own penthouse, eh? <laughs> no, nah, no. Unfortunately, I don't have a penthouse. I don't. Know. You have Maybe to finish. Higher up has one, but I don't know. <laughs> easily, you're easily one of the top fifty players in the league, according to us last year, right? What number were you? Well, apparently, apparently, I'm number twenty six. There you go. Up. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, we've, Kurt. We've already got a question from the chat, and it's about as predictable as we can imagine. This one's directed at you. Cavalry hat is on. We wouldn't expect anything else. Our viewers <laughs> want to know, do you own any other CPL hats? And if you do, why do you only wear the Cavs hat? I do own other CPL hats. Actually, when I was on the cross-country tour during the CPL trials, every club, except for two, uh, gave me a hat. Those two clubs were FC Edmonton didn't give me a hat. Uh, and Forge also did not give me a hat. So I don't have hats from those two clubs. But if, if I would have been at my home office today, which I was planning to be, but I had to stop through uh, this, the uh, the one soccer offices here. If I was at my home office today, I have my whole backdrop set up, which looks much better than what you guys are doing right there. This looks really, really just thrown together. What's behind you guys right now? I had uh, all I had the hats behind me. I had Wanderers. I had York Nine. I had some other ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, Calvary. Uh, I think I look good in black and red. And uh, I don't know. Everybody's got a team that they kind of. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say I don't root for Calgary, the team. I just, you know, I know some people at the organization out there. It's a good organization. I like Alberta. I like the city. Uh, and I look good in this hat, so I wear it. Is this all born out of Edmonton not giving you a hat? It could be. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> no, did, didn't you talk to Jeff Paulus yesterday? Because I saw a tweet yeah. from One Soccer saying that he's got a problem with the hat too now. So Jeff, Jeff send me a hat. I, mean, I think Paul, that's going to be FC Edmonton's biggest motivation this season is uh, knocking, knocking that hat off your head. <laughs> Louis, how much of your wardrobe now is a new HFX Wanderers gear? Oh, everything. I, I, didn't keep, <laughs> I didn't keep anything, and obviously, you know, I, I get a bunch of bunch of new stuff from here. So yeah, all new stuff and every, every everything new. You know, coming in here is everything's different. Everything is uh, 
you know, I have to adapt, you know, new city, new place to stay, a new training center, everything. So you know, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a fun two weeks and then obviously every, everything stopped. So. Let me, let me just get in one more time here. I don't, just to be clear, because this is going to come up now for the rest of my life for as long as I'm on one soccer. I don't care who wins the games. I could care less. When you're in journalism for 10 years, sports journalism for 10 years, you actually stop rooting for anybody. I used to be a massive U.S. soccer fan because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dual citizen. I'm American and Canadian. Uh, so, you know, the first 18 years of my life, I was a massive United States, you know, national team soccer fan don't care anymore because sports journalism has absolutely ruined fandom for me. So I don't care who wins the games guys. Okay. You got the disclaimer in there. People on Twitter still won't care, but we'll circle okay. back to that in a little bit. Let me back to your... <laughs> on that happy note, we'll uh, move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. So Louis, back to the decision and obviously a big professional move, personal move. What were some of the factors that impacted you and what really sold you on moving to HFX? Well, the first the first point was that I was out of contract, which is, you know, a very normal thing in this business. You, you do a one year contract, you have a good season and obviously you look at your options and uh, Halifax ex uh, expressed their interest pretty early. And, um, and I, it was, for me, it was the best opportunity, the best project uh, having played there, uh, having, spoken to some guys you know that were there last year for me it was a very clear opportunity and a very a very exciting project for me to go into uh speaking you know with with steven and uh in the off season and what what he would look for me you know for this season and all that i felt i felt good i, I we had you know good talks and that was the direction i wanted to go to and uh, i was you know, for me, it was clear that I needed a new challenge and a, I needed a new project after Winnipeg. So that was uh, that was for me the best opportunity and the best option to, to come to Halifax. Let me get in on uh, LBG. Um, you know, there's no secret that a lot of players left Winnipeg. A lot of players left Valor. Um, you know, did that have to do with, you know, the locker room out there? Did it have to do with the results? Like you said, you wanted to leave there for a number of reasons. I'm just wondering, you know, you know what 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 you thought of year one in, in Winnipeg, I guess, um, before before deciding to leave. Well, I I can only speak for myself. You know, I know we talk about a lot of guys, you know, leaving Winnipeg, and people wonder how come you know so many from Winnipeg. But the thing is, I can only speak for myself because we all have different reasons. But like I said, it was clearly for a different project. I think uh, the, 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 um, the Halifax situation, the club and everything, I think it fits me better uh, as a person and as a player. So for me, it was just to, to move on. You know, it was no bad feelings. I mean, I had, a, I had a year contract. That was from the beginning. In my head, I was, you know, it was very low percentage of chance I was staying in Winnipeg uh, since the beginning. Despite the season we had, despite you know everything that went on, um, I always you know for me the option was to go somewhere else and to improve and to try a new challenge. And that's why when Halifax came, it was uh, my decision was made. What was so we can go? Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Ali. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in with one. What was kind of the sales pitch for him from Stephen Hart that that got you into Halifax? Well, it, it didn't have to come that much from him, to be honest, because, uh, well, I knew him as a coach and I knew it would be interesting for me to play for him. But it was, you know, I guess the pitch was a lot from, you know, what I experienced going to Halifax. Uh, not a lot of people um, know, well, the, the players know what it's like to play in Halifax. But for me, it was something very different the, um, the environment we played in and uh, the how the crowd was reacting to the play and everything the field is the, the best in the league so it's all these little things and speaking to players you know from because obviously a big part for a player too is to be so speaking to some guys they had wonderful things to say about the city so I was really attracted to, to the whole thing, to obviously what Steven told me, but mostly for the club, uh, the, the stadium, the fans and all that. It was a thing. When I thought of me playing at home at that stadium, it was like, that was, 
that was super excited for that. So it was mostly that. So we're going to go back to the chat. We have another question from D Carrero. So we don't know for sure that it's Dylan, but we can only assume that it is. And Dylan wants to know how many times does LBG wear his recovery boots? Can you one explain what that means? And two answer D Carrero. Well, I can confirm that it's the real D Carrero because okay. only him would know about that. Oh, it, just, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a joke last year. I have recovery boots, the boots that pump up your legs. And uh, I bring them on every, every trip we go. I don't know. It, it's been my routine for so long. And when he, the first time he saw that and he thought, well, you're, you're going to bring this every trip because it's, it's kind of big, you know, it's big boots. You have to roll them. And that's the only reason I didn't get drafted in MLS is because I didn't have recovery boots. Yeah. That's why, it's the only, <laughs> well, it's the only reason I didn't it's, make it. It's, a, it's an investment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it must be like the uh, Tom Brady and his famous Uggs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we, I guess we all have, you know, different types of routine but no the Uggs are I, I stay with my recovery boots that's what works for me <laughs> okay fair enough uh so on the topic of Tom Brady just because it's something going on in the world obviously a big splash Louie not sure how much you follow the NFL but I think we can all appreciate just how much imp- influence and impact Tom Brady has so he moves from the New England Patriots to another team in our opinion there's it's a very still it's still very a small league is what I'm trying to say and we only have one year under our belt, but I'll ask you all the question. In your opinion, after year one, what would be the similarity or who would be the CPL player shaking things up so much like Tom Brady to Tampa Bay if we were to have someone like that in the CPL? Ollie, I already first said, Ollie gets it first. All right, go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I want to compare anyone to Tom Brady because like, he's arguably <laughs> kind of washed up, right? Like, so I don't want to miss Oh, him. no, let's wait. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. <laughs> Uh, here's, a, here's a scenario. Uh, Mississauga gets an expansion team, puts a big offer on the table for Bobby Smoniotis. What happens? Ooh, I like that. Does Bobby go home? I don't know. Does Louis go home when the Quebec team eventually comes? We could ask yeah. that question. <laughs> uh, never know. You never know. You know, Three years ago, I... I would never thought I would play, you know, in, in CPL or four years ago, you know, so it, it goes so fast. And if one thing I can say is that you can, I don't think you can judge, you know, a lot of people were judging my good friend Petrasso for going back home, you know, and sometimes it's part of the business. You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged on the decision you make. And obviously everybody, I think you should, res- we should respect that at a certain point, you know, that a, a player wants to go home, especially a player like him. He's been away, you know, for so long. So, I mean, I don't. Tom Brady's not going back home, but if he was, I like, I like how I like how you're staying away from Bustos. What's that? I like how you're staying away from Bustos, abandoning Winnipeg. Oh, but I think I think if we can come, I was gonna say if we can compare, uh, like a blockbuster trade type of thing, I think Bustos would be, you know, with yeah. the, with the off season he's had and the fact that he was waiting so long to. To take a decision or announce it, you know, I think that was the maybe the closest. Yeah. To the, well, there's the pressure now. There's, there's pressure now too. Big money move out to the West Coast. He's got to. He's got to turn that franchise around out there now. So we're going to be following it for sure. Of course, it, it brings pressure because of all the, all the the the, the talks, you know, about in the off season about him and all that. It brings pressure, of course. But I think, you know, if I was him, I would love that type of challenge that it brings, especially a player like him. He's a game changer. So hopefully he can be, you know, a franchise player. It's a good, I was joking about you moving back to um, Quebec. I'll give you Tom Brady in a second, Kurt, but I want to ask you, it brings up a good point, Louis. Expansion is something that fans talk about all the time and fans all over the country want a club in their city. And we know that the goal for the CPL is to get to that point. But for someone who was born in Quebec from and raised in Quebec, how much would it mean to that province and for football in Quebec to get an expansion team? Oh, it it would mean a lot. I mean, not... Not on, not personally for me. I mean, I, I, I would love it. You know, I'm from there. I want to represent, you know, I hope I represent Quebecers very well, but I don't think I'm in a point in my career, uh, my career where I, where I, I have to go back home, you know, absolutely. No matter what, you know, for me, going, moving somewhere has always been about the project and always been about the, the environment of the club and all that. If it wasn't the right fit for me, I, I would not force a move just to go back home. You know, I'm still young. 
Uh, for me, that's not that's not the case. That's not the case for for me personally to absolutely go back home right away. But obviously, I think it would be unbelievable to have a team. I really hope they can they can make it work and they can make it work, you know, soon because uh, Quebec is, you know, a bit like Ontario. There's a lot of players that, that a lot of quality players that come from there. So we see a, a York team that has, you know, a lot of Ontario players and quality players. So I think. I think I, Quebec uh, would make a, a wonderful team and would showcase so much talent from there that you know hasn't been shown yet. So for me, for me it's not about it, yeah. For me, it's not necessarily about there being enough players. It's about you know what what's the reaction going to be from Impact fans and you know is there room for multiple clubs in that city? I remember I did a story with TFC president Bill Manning about three years ago now where they were very territorial of you know not just toronto but the gta i think they basically you know told the cpl in that story good luck if you think you can come here and take fans away from us uh and maybe he was right maybe he wasn't right you know maybe he was just trying to, to claim his territory but i'm wondering if you think some impact fans could be swayed to to go and support something new in the montreal area well to be honest if i think if uh if a fan in Montreal right now has a has a choice, you know, I I think they would they would choose to go see a Montreal Impact game. But I don't think the impact is very territorial, and they they would be. I don't think they would be scared to to lose fans. And I hope they don't think like that because the point is not you know to lose fans or some people to gain fans. It's just to 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 bring everything up. It would just bring it would just bring the quality, bring, bring everything up, the talent, the, sh the showcase and, and all that. So, and of course, if the team is in Quebec, there's absolutely no territorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just speaking about the Montreal area. I know. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, but there's... I heard about, you know, rumors about Laval and all that, you know, and that, that, that that's pretty close to, to Montreal. So it's mm -hmm. coming, buddy. It's think coming. It would be a problem. No. no, I think it's a good point though. We're having it in Quebec proper, whether they play at Laval University of Laval to start I think that's to get a club in a market that doesn't have football at that level yet is definitely a big play okay Larson do you want to go on Tom Brady or we have we moved on I'll go quickly but I've changed from last night when I said Jose Escalante to, to forge for obvious reasons I, I think I think it's actually Jose Escalante to Edmonton because I can miss the, the, the picture of Jose Escalante standing next to Jeff Paulus and Jeff Paulus is holding the Escalante kit out in front of them. Uh, <laughs> just doesn't really make any sense to me, especially after Jeff Paulus, uh, what do you call him? Uh, more or less a dishonest player last year. I call him a clever player. I call him a clever player, but Jeff Paulus called him a dishonest, a dishonest player. So for me, it's Escalante to Edmonton would for me create the most waves, the most interest, the most kind of head turning in the CPL. I'll take it. Okay, back to Twitch. This one once again for Louis. Chris Johnson wants to know who is the funniest teammate you have in Halifax that you've met so far. Uh, in Halifax, wow, a lot of comedy out there, hey? Yeah, you guys are having a great <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> uh, you gotta say Stephen Hart's the funniest guy out there. Stephen Hart's the funniest guy out there, man. He, he is pretty funny. I mean, he has a he has a story for us every. Before every training, a yeah. story all about his uh, his career, coaching, and all. He always has a story. He had a good one about Messi too. But uh, no, for the players, I think uh, I think Oxner, the goalkeeper, he's, he's a pretty funny guy. Uh, Rapper sad, you know. I'm I'm still getting to know, you know, most of the guys. It's only been two weeks, so some some guys were shy at the beginning. But no, there's uh, I would say yeah, Rapper sad and uh, Oxner. I can see that. I can see the Ox being a pretty funny guy. Well, you know, goalkeepers. <laughs> hey, yeah, the ox is a good. <laughs> the ox is a good sport, man. When I was out there for the jersey unveil, he uh, he he had, he had some funny jokes. So yeah, I, I got time for the ox now. I got time for the ox now. He knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, anything else that you have right now? Or there's a a million things we could talk about, but is there any burning question you have in mind? Ah, uh, burning question for Louis. Louis, or in general, there's no rules. That's the beauty of Twitch. <laughs> Is there anyone, Lou? I'll, I'll, I've got another question for Louis. Is there anyone? I know you've only been in preseason for a couple of weeks before it all got put on hiatus, but you got a ton of new guys there. Has anyone really caught your eye so far? Anyone we should watch out for? Uh, yeah, and I think 
well, you know, most people are going to be surprised because it's not a, a move that, you know, everybody heard about and I have, even me, you know, obviously I follow on everything and I look at every player that comes in the team. But one that really impressed me is uh, Joao Morelli. Very, yeah. very good player. Uh, very, tec very technical. Um, uh, checking my, ro like checking my roster here. I don't even know about this guy. <laughs> really? You <laughs> scooped the one soccer uh, yeah. expert. We have well, a new one a soccer example. expert. That's a great nah, example. Nah, nah, not man. a lot of people heard of him, but I think, you know, we'll wait and see in the games. But for now, I've been very impressed. And some of the um, uh, two guys from university from here, uh, Corey Bent and uh, Ibra Sano, very, uh, very good in the two weeks that we were training at you know, I get to know them. I didn't didn't really know them, didn't really see them play before. And no, I've been impressed. They, there's there's a good level, but yeah, these three guys for me have been uh, have been impressive so far in preseason. Let's flip that question back on to Kurt and Ollie then. Who has been the most under or similar question, but who's been the most under the radar signing in your opinion of the offseason? But all over goers. I had Morelli down as one of my uh, one of my answers. Of course you did. So of course you did. Sure. Yeah, of course we want to see proof. We want to see proof. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't take notes like Kurt, but uh, yeah, I had no down. notes. I just have a roster in front of me. There's no. <laughs> um, the other one I had was Zetterberg at Edmonton. Um, I think a couple of clubs looked at him. He ended up with the Eddies, and Jeff Paulus is is pretty high on him. Um, between him and Boakai, I think they're hoping to get their version of kind of board. That's not. How is that under the radar? Zetterberg. That's not. How is that under the radar? He's supposed to be good. I don't think anyone's really talking about him. Well, no one's talking uh, about anybody right now, but <laughs> true. I don't think he's That's got much we're hype. Here. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's got much hype, but I think if he if he's good, then Edmonton have a chance of being a top half team. Uh, he's going to be key for them, and and I'm hearing some good things about him, so we'll see. All right, I'm going to go with this is going to surprise people. I'm going to give Valor some love here, and the one thing they really needed to do this year was turn things around at the back first and foremost. I have no idea how they're going to be do how they're going to do going forward. Uh, it still doesn't look that good, to be honest. Uh, but they've made a few additions at the back, including at the goalkeeper position, which they had to do. But I'm going to go with the big Panamanian center back they've signed, Amir Soto. Uh, I've watched some video on him, uh, and I've liked the video. And then I have followed up with the, you know, the scouts who got him to uh, Valor uh, at the league level. And they're also calling him a really intriguing player. I don't know if people listening know, remember Hamilton Olave when he was at Real Salt Lake, there's some comparisons to him, just a real, you know, the, the kind of, the kind of center back you expect to come out of Panama, a Roman Torres type, but he can play a little bit too. If he gets on the ball, he's safe. He makes the right decisions. So I'm interested to see how he does. And I think he could, uh, he could be under the radar, a real under the radar player, not the guys Ali says who are actual, you know, coming in with some pedigree. You hadn't even heard of Morelli. You're looking on your roster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep the CPL talk up. We'll go as quickly as we can. And what I mean by that is don't is we don't need a 30-minute debrief on every single team. But let's go east to west. We'll get Louis' thoughts in this as well. It might be from a player's perspective versus a pundit's perspective. But let's just sort of take the temperature on every team. What you think of the signings, Louis, what, um, what you might expect from them, um, go, as a as a competitor, so we'll start with Halifax. We've talked a little bit about um, your experience with them soon, and there's still some some moves to be done. But what can we expect from the Wanderers this season, just based on what you've seen from the coaches and the players? A uh, very talented team uh, right now. Obviously, it's been two weeks. Uh, like I said before, it's hard to it's hard to tell. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't do uh, you know too too much to to be able to say, okay, this is how we're going to play. This is how tactically, you know, we barely even got into tactics yet, which is very normal. But I think with the talent we have and um, the personal talent with, with the players we brought in, I mean, I think we can be a really interesting team, a really offensive team, which is, um, which would me, which for me would be very important, you know, to, to, to score a lot of goals and to play, you know, attractive and to play, um, efficient uh, offensive soccer so that's how I see it so far and um, I mean it, it, it's hard to tell I mean we one thing we have a lot of talent but we need we need to we need to put it on the field and we need to match it with hard work because I think we we saw with uh, cavalry last year what hard work and you know 
uh, tactical awareness and all that, how much, you know, it can bring you in this league and how much, uh, I, I felt like they had the, the warrior spirit, the, the fighting spirit to, to not lose and, and to go all out every game. So I think that that's important that we, that we bring that same type of mentality. And I think every team, you know, wants to bring that because we saw how much it can bring, you know, in this league. Uh, it's a quick one for me. I look at, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of these off season signings and I see an upgrade all over the field, not just with LBG, but, uh, Alex Marshall, he looks like he could be a special player. The Jamaican, the guy has 12 caps for Jamaica. If, uh, I was talking to, uh, a, a scout at the league level today and he had mentioned that if a CPL team signed a Canadian with 12 caps, we would all be losing our minds. So a team has signed a Jamaican with 12 caps, and it's really impressive. If you watch some video of Alex Marshall, uh, a really exciting player on the wing. Um, like I said, they've upgraded everywhere. A lot of people think uh, Halifax can be a sleeper this season. Yeah, the big thing for me is they were just too reliant on Garcia for goals last year, and not even goals, but even creating chances as well. So I think when you look at, like as you mentioned, Marshall, Riggy, Bent, Morelli, you know, they're, they're going to have a ton more guys who should be able to score and create goals this year. So if they can trans, translate that home form to, to away away games with a few more attacking uh, weapons, then it could be a good year for them. All right, this is going to be the toughest question of the eight, but big news, eighth team. is shouldn't say new news, it's older news, but still so many question marks because they're literally still building the roster. But... Let's let's take this a little more broad scope. So whether it's what it, what impact it'll have on the league with a balanced schedule or the signings you've seen so far, or even just the obvious fact of having Madrid as owners of the of the team, what are your um, what's your take on Ottawa so far? I guess we'll start with Ollie this time. Yeah, this I don't I don't want to be the guy who throws out the coronavirus is a good thing take here, but this is probably I was going to do it anyway. I was going to do it anyway. Don't worry. I got your back. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's, it's going to help them, right? Because they're yeah. going to get more time to to build their squad and, and to have a proper preseason. Um, I was pretty bullish on their chances a few weeks ago. I put out some power rankings, which absolutely nobody liked, and I didn't have them in last place. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a little bit more pessimistic now, not because they've, they've been signing players that I've been unimpressed by. I just think, you know, talking to a few coaches around the league, one of the things that I think a lot of teams are going to benefit from is having a coach in his second year who kind of gets the league now, understands the, the challenges, understands what's required, um, and can kind of learn from the mistakes that were made last year. Um, so I, I really look around this division now, and, and Valor have got, obviously, quite a bit of work to do up front. But apart from them... There's some really good squads. I, I think every team has gotten quite a bit better. Um, and so for Ottawa starting from scratch is, is going to be really tough for them, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I have three thoughts on Ottawa. One of them is the one that Oliver Platt just, just mentioned with the kind of benefiting from having a bit more time. We hope it's not too much more time, but a bit more time. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the other part of that is they've been traveling a lot more, it seems, than they have been training. I mean, they've, they've had to rush home from, from Spain due to the virus outbreak over there. So uh, this is a team that really hasn't come together at all. Love Ben Fisk. Love the signing. Love the guy. Uh, so we're so really happy he's landed somewhere, and, and hopefully he can be a big piece for them this season because I don't think he got the opportunity he deserved in Pacific. Yeah, I think Fisk, Fisk is front runner for the captain's armband for sure. Louis, maybe more from uh... – an imp- or a factor on your end, what does an eighth team mean for the CPL balance schedule? Is that something you're excited about? There's some uncertainty, obviously, with a new team, new coaches, new players. But in general, big picture, what's your what are your thoughts on the eighth team? Uh, no, I think it's very positive. Uh, as if as of the schedule, you know, <laughs> how yeah. much is it going to Shorter trips, it? shorter oh, trips. With uh, yeah, shorter trip for sure for from Halifax. But you know, if we have to squeeze in um, the schedule because of the virus and all that maybe it won't have uh, that much of an effect but from the schedule that they've put out from the beginning uh it was it was much better and and, you know the amount of time you go play uh, against the teams and i think it it balanced everything out and like we said speaking of ottawa you know having a an ownership like that i mean it, it can just be good for the league and it can just bring the level up even more and you know, hopefully for them, they get they get everything figured out and they have more time now. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully they get everything together and then we 
hopefully we play this season you know early all right the road trip continues cross country forge next up reigning champs larson first word off season moves and do you think they have what it takes to read I'm, I'm seeing correct me if i'm wrong i'm seeing one move in the off season adding a goalkeeper but uh, goalkeeper, yeah. look like this this is a team that that uh, I think has enough, even without Tristan Borges, to be just fine this season. Uh, I thought Tristan Borges was good last year. I thought he was the best player in the league last year. I also thought that uh, there were other guys in that team that that uh, could have performed even better than they did. Schwanier, um, uh, we'll see if he can step up this year in, in, in his place. Maybe they need a number nine. I like Anthony Novak. Maybe that's the only thing they're missing right now is a, is a real top number nine. Uh, but listen, it's the same team. Uh, so uh, until someone knocks them off their perch, uh, it's, it's, it's a good team and probably the best team in the league. There's going to be additions there as well. Like I know they haven't done anything yet apart from bringing in Monsalve as, as a number two keeper, but they, they've got some things in the works. Um, it's obviously taken a bit more time, I guess, than some other teams and they had the Borges situation to deal with, but they'll add for sure. And, and I think it'll be pretty interesting when they do. I do wonder, I mean, I know I've, there, there were guys who I, I, I think can step in and, and, and do a job, but I do wonder, you know, how b- big of a leap guys like, you know, Marcel Zajac uh, and, and Cadell Thomas can take in year two, right? Because I think uh, those are a couple of guys who we wanted to see a little bit more from. So I think it's going to be, you know, key for them that, that Bobby Smirniotis gets a little bit more out of those guys. Louis, are the champs still the ones with the biggest targets on their back? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, that's a top team uh, in the league. Very, a lot of quality, a lot of, you know, that for me, they're, they're, they're up there in the best two teams uh, of the league last year. And I think, yeah, obviously losing their, their, their best, their top scorers, you know, is, 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 it may be hard for them, but if I'm, if I'm a, a winger on that team, I see, you know, I go, I go in preseason with a lot of, you know, hunger and I know somebody will step up you know to the plate and somebody might you know score more goals than hit than Borges last year and you never know with a team like that I mean they're very well surrounded they have quality at every position so I think that the, losing their top scorer is not a is not a problem for them yeah but, but who's more so, so for me and I'll, I'd like to get LBG's you know opinion on this who who's a more important player for them last year Kyle Becker or Tristan Borges because for me if they lost Kyle Becker I'd be a lot more concerned for Forge you're right because they go together, right? I mean, Borges was a good player, but he was, he he needs a team with him, and yeah. I think every big player uh, needs a team supporting him. And obviously, talk about Becker, who's a very good player. He doesn't get you know all the praise you know like Tristan gets, but he you know he does maybe half the job, and the other players make half the job for the goal for yeah. for Borges. So I think that's why losing maybe. Losing one player is not going to affect them. And we see that they haven't changed the team, which is a good thing, you know, for them. So no, I don't think it, I don't think it'll be a, a problem for them to to lose Borges. Do you know Schwanier, yeah. uh, Louis? Yeah, from yeah, we back. I think yeah. he's got more to give. What, what do you think about him? Yeah, of course. It, you know, hard situation for him last year. Uh, Forge has a lot of competition, I think, uh, internally, which is why, you know, their level is, is very good. Uh, every position, there's competition. And we talk about wingers, you know, we had Chouanier and Thomas and Forge's Nanko, you know, the, the, there's a lot of quality players. So, you know, I think for him, it's, it's a big opportunity this year. Uh, like I said, somebody, you know, has to step up and, you know, make an even better job than Tristan last year. So I think for for them right now, it's a, it's a huge opportunity. And for Schwanier especially. One more thing. One more thing. And this is, uh, this is a quick one, LBG. You think Borges should have had his suspension uh, overturned uh, before the final last year? Uh, yeah, that, that, that went a bit sideways <laughs> that, <laughs> with the referee. And I know this referee, you know, I've had uh, it the year and I don't know. I don't know what happened, and, but I think it was the, I think it was the right decision. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, no, I think yeah, I, I, I was watching as a fan, obviously. And, to, you know, to have two good players play, you know, the, the, the second leg for me was just, you know, the a better show and. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, so I was, that was there was no problem for me to, to overturn it. 
Somehow we've already got through 40 minutes of this discussion. So we want to move a little bit quicker through the rest of the country. So maybe one thought, Kurt, I know you had three lined up for the last couple, but one thought we'll go around the rest of the country real quick, just so everyone gets their fix. Uh, to the other Ontarian side, York nine, Ollie, you'll, you'll get the first word because you got the Jersey hanging up on the wall. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie gets, <laughs> oh, so I want to hear from Ollie about the, uh, sorry, his name is slipping my mind now, but the French left back that Ollie is absolutely ripped apart. I, I uh, for Valor. Valor. <laughs> okay, go, go for it. Give me, All right, are, we doing, are we doing Y9 or Valor? Let's do Y9 yeah. first so we can stay oh, okay. in geographical yeah. order. We, can't, right. we can't get too crazy no here. Intended. Fine, fine. Um, I, uh, for Y9, everything rests on the international guys they brought in up front. Like The defense is the same. It was pretty good last year. Uh, the midfield is largely the same, but even the players they've added, like Manella, are pretty safe bets. So up front, you've got Petrasso, and then you've got a load of guys we know nothing about. So Vasconcella, yeah. Sugaritsa, uh, Yako, then the new one. If those guys pan out, they're a contender. If they don't, they're not. It's as simple as that for me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, but what I would say more so than anything is I thought they had a good roster last year, a roster that probably should have just blown your nose there on camera, yeah, Oliver. Sorry. Oh, great. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. <laughs> Needs must. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can literally just go off camera and do that. But okay. Uh, no, um, so, yeah. It's a real on one soccer. So, so anyway, okay, back. Boys, my, play I, nice. Play I nice. Lost, I lost my thought there for a second. Uh, I thought they had a good roster last year, probably one that should have finished um, a little bit closer to, to Forge and Calvary. So I think it's about how it all comes together. Uh, you know, of course, the international players are a bit of a question mark. Ryan Telfer, you know, was was you know one of the best players in the league last year. He's not there, but for me, it's can uh, can Jimmy Brennan and, and Paul Stalteri get things right in terms of bringing the group together. Louis, unless you have a, a quick word on York Nine, we can go on to Valor for choices. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same uh, opinion as Kurt on on that one. I think a lot of a lot of talent, but it's just to uh, to see how they put it all together. Okay, yeah. so then let's move on to Valor. You obviously have the inside track. Um, being, being away from the team, focus on a new club, but based on where you guys left things last season, what do you think will be the biggest change from the core of that group? Well, everything changed. <laughs> uh, you know, with everybody that left, you know, Winnipeg and all the um, additions they made, I think for them too is... It's hard to tell, you know. Uh, I can't, I can't say with okay because of this guy. Because they signed this guy, they're gonna be good. Uh, I know a lot of people did that last year. Um, we were in preseason in Dominican, and we were hearing, oh, well, this team has this guy, and this one has this, and and then it, it ended up being this team had a bad season, and they still had talent, but they were they had problems, and so it's hard to tell, especially with with a new team. They got so many new players. Uh, it, it's hard to tell. I, 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 they made good, you know, additions and, you know, experienced players, which was different than last year. I think we were missing a bit of experience last year. So, you know, I think that's a positive for them is that they, they went and got professionals that had been playing, you know, uh, for a couple of years. Okay. We have some questions pouring in from Twitter and from Twitch. So what I'll say is if it's okay with Larson and Platt and Kurt, I only ask you this because you're my boss. Do we want to save your opinions on Valor and the remaining teams for tomorrow? Because we're back on again at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Let, let's let's save them because I think we need to spend at least a few minutes on Oliver Platt explaining himself for completely <laughs> for completely destroying a player who you know has some you know French League One experience. And I think Rob Gill, uh, he want he wants an explanation as well. So we're gonna we're gonna start with that from on, on Valor tomorrow. All right, okay. I'm I like hold that. my tongue and uh, leave it till tomorrow. Okay, good <laughs> stuff. So, for those of for those of you who have been hanging out with us for the past 43 minutes, we obviously appreciate it. We're going to try and go for about 15 more minutes, keep the conversation flowing. We'll still take some of your questions, but uh, yeah, you can stay tuned for that tomorrow. We'll also have Giuliano Frano joining us again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. So, if you're a fan of Valor. Cavalry, Edmonton, or Pacific. We'll get some more insight from you tomorrow. So let's check in with what's going on online. Christian Oxner, Louis, appreciated the shadow. He says, A, my guy, LBG. So uh, brownie <laughs> points with your teammates. Um, and here's a question. This is from Igloo Coder, and he wants to know, how much analytics do you guys use pre and post game as part of your, your debriefs and, and post game briefings? I think Oliver, Oliver more than me. Uh, I think that's more in an area he likes to focus on. Um, 
oftentimes Oliver Platt and I get into arguments over what stats are relevant. And I think even an analytics guru like, like Oliver Platt would say a lot of the stuff that's out there uh, is kind of useless in terms of the conversation. We can talk about, you know, expected goal stats and, and key passes and how relevant those actually are to, to, to looking at a player and what he, what he brings every game. Right. So uh, the answer for me is Oliver Platt uses them a lot more than me. Uh, Cause I'm always trying to weed out the ones that don't matter at all. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Like I, I do look at them and, and we have like, luckily the CPL is pretty good stats available. So that's been helpful this year. I, I don't disagree with Kurt though. I think I'm probably closer than to him than he thinks. And uh, I, I think they, <laughs> they really do need context. Um, and I think sometimes the use of them that you see on social media, when you see people posting charts and stuff, if I see one, if I see one more person tell me Amir Didic outperformed uh, Dominic Zator last year, I'm going to lose my mind. And then they bring up all these like header clearances and stuff, and it's just it's getting out of control. So, yeah, I, I think things like pass accuracy get used too much without really understanding the role of the player in the team, right? Like a player who's asked to play more difficult passes is going to have a lower pass accuracy, and that doesn't mean he's not doing his job. Um, a centre back who just passes square every time is going to you know, complete 95% and that's not really that challenging. So that was me in college. (laughs) There's a little bit of context there that that I think is is lacking sometimes, but there's a lot of value in in them as well. And they're used, in my opinion, in the right way. Yeah. I think the question was actually posed for LBG specifically about <laughs> as a player. But, we just uh, took it. Thanks, we just took it. They all got good in. points, though. They all got yeah. good points. But I think no, for us, we we use it too, and uh, I think it's it's very important with these things to understand uh, like the type of player you're that you're looking into the stats. You know, some stats for certain players, they they it it, it has no. There's no point in looking, you know, into certain stats. But if I look at, you know, midfielders and I, I look often at uh, forward passes because often you see midfielders that have their in the, the 90 percent, you know, passing accuracy. But you see it sideways passes or backward passes, you know, yeah. as a, like I was saying with Halifax this year, we're trying to play offensive. We're trying to score, you know, a lot of goals we won't be able to do that, you know, if we keep going backwards. So for me, it's, it's little things like that and uh, recuperations and ball winnings and all that, you know, as a midfielder, that, that's, you know, stuff I look at. But sometimes, like I said, accuracy is not, you know, you need to look at, you know, is, is, the, is the guy playing forward? Yeah. So. I think those are all really good points. And just for the sake of rounding out, going around the horn as a play-by-play announcer, I use them quite a bit because they're easier to digest and get a snapshot of the teams. If I'm calling a game on Friday between Halifax and Forge, and then I got a game the next afternoon, Pacific and Valor, it's a lot easier for me to go through leaderboards and basic stats when I'm doing my prep than it is to watch both teams last full games. So we can use them a lot that way, especially during broadcasts. I'm sure Wheels would have uh, his own take on on how much he uses it, and Nigel as well. But I know that, um, one, it's it's good just to pepper in throughout the broadcast. It gives you more things to talk about, more stories. If In particular, when things might seem a little strange, sort of once the season's comfortably in its use, if someone's all of a sudden spiked up or if someone we may not talk about a lot is leading the league or near the top of the league in an important category, that's when we as play-by-play announcers really use those stats. All right. Back you know what stats to... are you know what stats are too right now. Stats I find are a way for coaches to validate their team's performance, no matter what happens on the scoreboard. I find a lot more coaches are doing that. And I don't like it. Fair enough, Louis. Question <laughs> for you. This one's coming from me Fair. out of genuine curiosity. As we get some more coming in through Twitch and Twitter, but now that you've had some time to properly digest a full year in the CPL. What moment are you most proud of from your time in year one? Uh, moments like particular, particular moments like games. Yeah, it could be, overall? it could be a, a game that stands out to you. It could be the world-class goal you scored. It could be anything in the locker room interaction with fans yeah. literally could be anything you want to, you want to draw on. Yeah. I think the, the, I think the the Edmonton game, not, not only for my goal, but, for the, the type of game that we didn't give up and we, we came back to the score. I think we were in a, in, a, in a good position at that point. We had a lot of problems last year winning two games in a row. <laughs> but when we were winning the games, I find like we, we, especially the first game, I think the first game was the best 
uh, mental state we, we've been, you know, all season. I think that it's a game that we grinded out and we were fighting, you know, to keep the score. And when we had chances, we scored. So, so that, that was a good moment. And yeah, the, the, my goal, obviously, for against Edmonton was, was a good moment. And, you know, Bustos scoring right after. And it was just, it was just great. We felt, you know, great. And the mentality was great that game. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we, we couldn't keep that for, you know, for more, more than a game or two. So that was disappointing. But, no, I'm very, very happy overall with uh, my season last year. And coming from, from a, a big injury, I was happy to, to stay fit uh, uh, until, you know, five games in the season. That's why you're number 26, buddy. <laughs> 24, actually. 26. Oh, was it 24? Oh, yeah, 24. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, that. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Kurt, you don't have that number on your Bible down below? I thought you had every I have every. I have every player. I have every player right here. Okay, yeah. Like you're Start preparing at, for a fantasy see, football draft more than see, a, a people. All, I know I know some of the CPL coaches and really coaches everywhere think I just kind of just, just ramble about nonsense, but I actually do my homework. So this is proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ali and Larson, any uh, one final question for Louis before we go? Um, I think, uh, well, we never got to this. I liked this one. Uh, it was, um, you know, what what are you most looking forward to when, you know, life returns to normal and we're not worried about being close to people and you're, uh, you know, you're back at, at work? But, you know, what are a few things you're, you're looking most forward to when uh, this uh, – coronavirus passes us by just the uh, to be honest just the, the the team vibe going in the locker room in the morning seeing everybody training going to the gym i pretty much my every day you know people must think oh well you're just looking forward to go back to work but it's i don't know it, it, it gets to you mentally i think when you don't have access to this obviously our, our jobs are very physical so for us to just stay at home and not train and that that's been really hard so just to get back in the routine and to train and to you know play small games you know maybe sometimes it's things you 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 think about now and maybe you you take for granted uh now that they're away you know I, I, I talk to all the players and it's it's all something we we miss so much just to to get on the field and to work so that just to get back into into the routine, that's going to be fantastic. Excellent. Ollie, any last ones? Um, no, it's a nice note to end on. To be honest, so, I got one. I got one more. I got one more. I got. I made this sign today. Of course you today. Do. Just, uh, right, we go. That's not a question. To listen, <laughs> listen to the I experts. To to listen to the experts. Look at that logo. I don't think that meets brand guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be getting a phone yeah. call from someone after this for that. All right, All right. it's been it's been 53 minutes of fun. Uh, Louis, massive thank you for being the inaugural guest. We wish you thank all you. the best this season. We also thank wish you. you a long and prosperous career. But when you are done playing, based on what we saw these, this past hour, give us a call. We'd love to have you on the One Soccer Desk. We, we really appreciate would, the insight. I would love it. Thank I you. would love it. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Louis. All, All right, right, everybody, we are back tomorrow, as we mentioned earlier, 1 p.m. Eastern once more. Julian Ofrano will join us. Ace is going to take the host chair. Kurt's waving his listen to the expert sign. So you can listen to Ali, Asa, Juliana, Juliano, excuse me, and, uh, and Kurt tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Send us your questions. We're going to get to the rest of the teams we couldn't cover today. And thanks for hanging out. Stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk to you all very soon. See you later, guys.